Good afternoon, Madden 16 fans. My name is Cody, and I'm really excited to uh, to share this tip with you guys over at Mutthead.com. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be teaching you how to beat man-to-man -man defense in Madden NFL 16. Uh, we've all had those guys that come out in quarter normal, and they run the play two-man QB contain, and they use her the middle of the field, and it's very difficult uh, to consistently win against man-to-man -man coverage. Today I'm going to be showing you a few tactics that you can use from the Kansas City Chiefs playbook to help you beat that kind of a style of a defense. So what we're going to do is we want to get uh, a team with good route running, good receivers. I personally prefer the Green Bay Packers, um, but if you're playing Mutt, just get you some nice budget receivers like Keenan Allen. Uh, there's also the Tyler Boyd NFL Draft and some se several, several cards that you can utilize uh, to be able to beat man-to-man -man coverage. So the play that we're going to be going over today is this play Z-Spot. And the reason I like this is because of the post route on the far right side of the screen that we're going to be able to utilize to beat man-to-man. -man. What you also want to do is be sure to put a nice pass catching running back in at the back. And we like to use James Starks when we're using uh, the Packers, but that's what we're going to go with. So we pick the play Z-Spot and we come out at the play call menu here, or we're at the line of scrimmage. Now. When you're facing this alignment, this is pretty much an instant tell that it's probably going to be either two-man under or cover two defense. So that means that the defense can do really one of two things. The, the, the deep safety, if he comes down, they, they may drop him out, but normally that deep far left safety is going to be going into a deep uh, blue zone. And we'll show you the play art here for two-man under. This is what we see at the snap of the ball. So as an offense, we have a couple of options of which we can attack. We can do some floods, we can do some picks and rubs, we can make some unbumpable routes. Uh, there's several options we have here, but the biggest thing that I'm going to be focusing in on today is to use uh, basically a double flood over the middle of the field. So what I like to do is I like to take uh, my tight end, Rodgers, and I like to put him on a curl route. And then from there, I like to take my wide receiver here, James Jones, and I'm going to put him either on a drag or a slant. You can do whichever one you prefer. Uh, there's times where I think the drag gets more separation. Um, it does. The drag is better against zone coverage. The slant is probably better against man defense. But I find success with both of them. And then with your running back here, James Starks, we can do two things. We can either place him on a wheel pattern or we can place him on a little quick out. Those are either... Uh, either of those options will, will, will work just fine for what we're going to be doing. So what we want to do is we want to motion James Jones to the far left, and right before he sets his feet, we're going to snap the ball. It's going to give him a nice little speed burst on this drag over the middle of the field. Now the thing you have to remember what the drag is again, it is better against zone than it is against man. So one of the things if we want to just mix that slant in as well, and they're going to be used to the slant, and they're actually going to be, normally they're going to be trying to stop your slant route over the middle. So the reason I like to put him on a drag is because I know they're going to use him anyway, and that drag is going to open up a nice window to throw this curl to your tight end, Rodgers. And uh, you want to have a tight end with good catching traffic. I recommend uh, the Signature Series Jason Witten card. It does pretty well for me. The main read on this, though, is going to be your deep post to Jordy Nelson. I'm going to pass lead that down into the inside, and you're going to see you're going to be able to get some very good separation. Now, one key thing to remember about this route to Jordy Nelson is it only works very it only works well if you have a receiver with 96 route running or higher. Uh, th that's the key stat when you're running this play. That far right receiver needs to have a 96 route running or higher. And when he has that 96 route running, it makes this play work uh, very, very effectively. Another thing you can do, too, is you can playmaker this drag upfield. You can maybe get some user catches and things like that going on uh, as well. I find a lot of success with, with user catching the drag. Um, there's also another version or way to run this, uh, another way to run this play, and it actually works uh, there's two setups. So we have the first one in which I showed you kind of a horizontal or kind of a middle flood. And so what that was was we had this setup right here pretty much. And this is what we were going with. Something like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to, your routes are going to go heavy middle of the field. Okay. I don't know what happened there. I think Rogers got, Rogers got pushed back or something. But your routes are going to go uh, heavy over the middle of the field. 
Now what we can do off that is we want to have routes that go heavy to the other side of the field. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to take uh, James Jones and we're going to put him on a hitch route. And then we're going to take Rogers and we're going to put him on a fade. You could leave him on the flat if you wanted to. I prefer to put him either on a, you can put him on any, pretty much anything you want. I like the fade the best. And then we're going to take our running back James Starks and place him on a curl route. And we're going to motion James, James Jones out to the far left. It's going to make him set up in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to be our first read really quick, low pass, lead that route, and you're going to be able to beat man uh, real quick to the flats. Now, again, this is a man read. If they go cover two, so we'll show you that. If they go cover two, then what that's going to do is it's going to leave Randall Cobb, in theory, open, or you can split the seams with Rodgers. Okay, so it's going to leave some other things open, but the, the key here, again, we are trying to attack man-to-man. -man. However, what they're going to start doing, the more you run your underneath plays, is they're going to start taking the safety away over the top. And what that's going to allow you to do then is it's going to allow you to throw up this one-on-one, -on -one, it, and I didn't take the safety away. What they will start doing, guys, I'm just telling you from experience, because you'll be throwing the uh, route to James Jones, that quick drag, or that quick corner to Cobb. They'll take that safety away, and what it's going to do is it's going to, whoops, I flipped the play on accident. It's going to give you a one-on-one -on -one to your tight end. And again, this is why I recommend to have a guy that has good catch in traffic, because in the one-on-one -on -one scenarios, I find that catch in traffic is the most important uh, stat to have. So you get that one-on-one, -on -one, just lob it up and let uh, Rodgers go get it. If you want to go there, if you don't want to go there, you have other options as well. Uh, you still have that Z spot. Uh, you, you still have that uh, nice post route on the far right that does get that separation. The main reason I wanted to show you this one is because it's, it actually gives us a good tactic for zone. When, but also this route to James Starks. So we put Starks on a curl, and what we're going to do is we're going to hold left trigger, and we're going to flick it to the left, and it's going to playmaker him over the middle. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a very consistent read uh, against man-to-man -man coverage. What James Starks is going to do now, and this is the Skimbo setup that he ran in the Madden Challenge against Problem and was very effective with it, is you have this little quick read to your back out of the backfield. So there's several ways to run this play in short. Um, and I have one final way I want to show you. Now, you can only use this setup if your running back is a good receiving threat. Um, you know, this doesn't quite work as well if you have uh, more of a trucking style, not very, not very good route running running back. So I would recommend like a Marshall Falk or a Danny Woodhead or something like that when you're running this setup. So what we want to do this time is we're going to take James Starks, we're going to put him on a wheel route. And then we're going to take uh, Rogers. we're going to put him on a slant. And we're going to motion Starks out to the right, and we're going to snap it right before he sets his feet, right there. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a nice little one-on-one -on, -one on the outside uh, that we can normally take advantage of. And the better route running you have at running back, the more effective this play is going to be. The reason it's not quite as effective right here is because we're going against a quarters, uh, a quarters defense, so the corner on the outside has better man coverage than James Starks has route running. But again, if you, if you get in the situation where it's covered, then you obviously want to go away from it. Otherwise, you can throw interceptions like you just saw me do. But again, the purpose of this is it gives you another option for the same play. The real route, though, that you want to target is this slant route to Rodgers when he comes over across over the middle. It's just a quick slant read, and again, there you go. It's just a bullet pass to the outside, uh, and you're going to be able to complete that at a fairly high percentage. And again, what matters is your route running up to the 96 threshold. Once you have route running at 96, that's basically the key uh, in, in, in MUT this year is to have receivers who all have higher than 96 route running. The best part about this setup, though, is it really opens up this post route over the middle uh, to Jordy Nelson. What happens, and Jordy Nelson does not have, in the like for the Green Bay Packers right now, um, the way this game is set up, he, I, he, I don't think he has over 96 route running, so that's why he's not getting quite as open as he normally would. But anyway, here we go. So we step up in the pocket, and that wheel route is going to is going to allow that route to Jordy Nelson to become more open because it's going to pull the safeties away in the two-man undershell. 
What I'm trying to get at is this. What they're going to start doing is they're going to start coming to the table and they're going to say, okay, we're tired of you throwing this route to Jordy Nelson. They're going to have to use her defend it, especially if they're going to go man to man. When you run this wheel route to James Starks, what's going to happen is they're going to come down on that route to your guy and Aaron Rodgers with great deep accuracy is going to be able to throw that wheel route in behind it. So this is one of those plays you want to start using when they're running a lot more underneath zones. If they start taking away their deep blue zones, you can run this. And you can actually do it on both sides. We audible, and this is the final section of today's video, if we audible to the play verticals, which is in almost every single shotgun bunch week, but it's, it is also in the quick audibles for the Kansas City. So we audible to the play verticals. And what they're going to do is they're going to come down and they're going to think that we're running they're going to think that we're running this route to uh, our, our, they're going to think we're running this route right here to Jordy Nelson because we're going to make it look exactly the same. So we go to the play verticals and what we're going to do is we're going to take our running back here, Starks, and we're going to place him on a, on a little curl route. And then we're going to take our, our guy Rogers here and we're going to place him on that fade route that we were running earlier. But now, and we're going to motion James Jones, James Jones to the left. We're going to snap it right before he sets his feet right here and again they take that safety away it's going to give us a one-on-one -on -one advantage and if you have a fast receiver it's not you know it's normally going to be very successful james jones is more of a catch and traffic receiver so it doesn't work quite as well in the uh practice mode as it does in mutt but i'm telling you guys you guys get a you know like i think my on my team i use um uh, i use tyler boyd the nfl draft from the cincinnati Bengals, and he gets open every single time so what I wanted to basically go over today, guys, is your main man beater is going to really, you have your underneath stuff, you have your slants, you have your, uh, your hitches, you have your, all those concepts, but then when you feel this Z-Spot powerful post route into it, it makes it so much better. And real quick on the Z-Spot post, and, and we'll wrap up after this, when you're running this Z-Spot post route, you want to pass lead it. Um, at about seven o'clock on your joystick, so you want to be—it's want to be down into the inside, so down into the inside, and you're going to get that nice little. The computer is going to make a very good user catch for you, um, and that's the key with this route. Is you don't even really have to click on and user it yourself. Pass it down to the inside when he comes over the middle, and you see only your receiver can get to that ball because he has the inside position. And again, guys, I'm gonna—I want to reiterate the higher route running you have out there the better it's going to be for, uh, for the separation. You're going to get more separation, which means it's going to be easier to make that catch. You're not going to have to have good catch in traffic or whatever. You just need that route running, and there you see that's what we're going to get nine times out of ten. When you have a route that powerful against man-to-man -man defense, it is very rare this year. But what you can do off of it is what's even more incredible. We can build off of it with several different route combinations, will routes, because they're going to have to take away the safety. They're going to have to take away the safety to user it, and then we're going to hit them right behind the ears uh, with nice will routes on the backside. Okay, guys, so that concludes uh, my tip for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you want to, you can check out more content from me by subscribing to my YouTube channel. The link will be in, a, in the description of this video. If you have any questions for me, just feel free to comment on this video, and I'll get back with you.